Hey, what's going on, y'all? Uh, so, one of the most frequent questions I get around on Twitter is how do I set up an AR-15? Keep in mind, what I do probably won't work well for you. You just basically got to mess around with your own gun and see what you need and what works for you. This doesn't by any means mean this is the correct way to do it. It's just how I do it, and that's perfectly fine. Your way could be different. So, I've been meaning to do this video for a while. Finally getting around to it. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first rifle I have is a BCM Recce 14. This is uh, probably the rifle you see the most in any of my YouTube videos. Uh, I've had this for a couple years now. I think I'm at like 12,000, 13,000 rounds on it. And uh, it's held up great. I haven't had a single failure. But here's how I set it up. And this is probably the most common setup. I have across all of my ARs. We've got pinned and welded BCM A2 flash hider, I believe. Because it's a 14 and a half inch barrel, this muzzle device is pinned and welded to get it to 16 inches, thanks ATF. We've also got a Streamlight ProTac uh, 1000 lumen flashlight here with a pressure sensitive pad. I've got a Ranger band uh, on top of it. it. Makes a little more sensitive, but also it just is an extra layer to make sure that it stays attached. I haven't had any issues with it staying attached, but it's just there. On the other side, I've got a rail scales uh, M-lock grip panel right here. To be honest with you, it just looks cool. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. I also have a Daniel Defense uh, vertical grip here. I've chopped it down with a, a saw, half the length that it originally was. It usually comes out to here. I chopped it off because of the way I grip my rifle. I like to have the grip closer to the muzzle because that enables me to get a better angled grip to pull this rifle into my shoulder, like so, with a little bit more leverage. All right, got a BCM quick detach mount here with a Vickers Blue Force gear sling attached to it. Uh, it's Ranger banded here, uh, just because I never take this sling off. I've got an Aimpoint Pro Patrol, I believe, uh, mounted up here as the optic, 0 to 50 yards. Uh, great optic, haven't had any issues with it with an Aimpoint. A Magpul Bad Lever here. Bad Levers are kind of controversial. I like them, I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, they allow you to close the bolt with your trigger finger. So I've got the bolt locked back here. Instead of going through closing the bolt with your left hand, I can just do it with my dominant hand's index finger. I like bad levers. I haven't had any issues with them. I think a lot of the concerns around them are overstated. I've also got a BCM gunfighter charging handle and a BCM stock right here. This is pretty much a factory rifle. The only things I've added are the bad lever, the aim point optic, light, Daniel Defense, vertical grip, and the sling. So this is my primary AR that I shoot. I shoot this the most by far. Next up, I have a Daniel Defense Mark 18-ish. Got a BCM angled grip here. This is a 10.3 inch barrel from Daniel Defense. Y'all know what the Mark 18 is, so I don't need to go into the history. But I've got an angled grip here from BCM. Venom Defense uh, linear compensator up here. Daniel Defense QD mount mounted to the Picatinny rail. Trijicon MRO up top. Um, I'm going to put a bad lever on this pistol lower once I SBR this, and I've got an SB Tactical PDQ, I believe is what it's called. It's the one that looks cool that everyone likes. You get a shittier cheek weld. It's not as good as the SBA-3 in my opinion. Uh, this, ref this pistol, rather, thanks ATF, is uh, pretty bare bones, mostly because I'm waiting to put a suppressor on here and then SBR this. And then I also have a LaRue I think it's the MDT 4.5 pound trigger, as well as the BCM gunfire charging handle. But yeah, this is pretty bare bones. I don't shoot this rifle a lot, um, just because I'm still waiting to get a suppressor and to SBR this, but this will likely become the one I practice with most once I get all that paperwork done. All right, moving on. We have an Aero Precision that I put together about a year and a half ago, or nine months ago, something like that. Moving up from the muzzle back, Venom Defense muzzle brake, Aero Precision barrel, Magpul MOE SL mid-length handguard. Uh, Magpul came out with these, I think, a year or two ago. I love these uh, MOE SL handguards way better than the first-gen MOEs. You've got a little bit 
extra space here to again get a more forward grip, get a little bit more torque. Uh, it also comes with M lock paneling here, Magpul RVG uh, vertical grip on here, as well as a Streamlight Pro Tech without the pressure pad because there is not a good place to mount the pressure pad on here. So I just have it button activated. I don't typically use this as often, uh, so I don't need the pressure pad when I'm shooting at night. Moving on, I think it's a Magpul uh, M lock QD mount here that goes into the handguard. Uh, the Holosun 510C, this is a great red dot. I have an astigmatism, so EOTechs are a no-go for me, uh, but I love the wide field of view that an EOTech provides. Um, and this Holosun is fantastic. It's got a couple different reticle options. I just keep it on a simple red dot. On the other side, I've got a Magpul Bad Lover. I've got a Toolcraft uh, bolt carrier group, Aero Precision rear sights. Radian Raptor charging handle. This is a Bravo Company BCM uh, stock, gunfighter stock. But yeah, very similar setup. It's gonna probably follow this pattern for most of the video. This is a Daniel Defense Mark IV V9. I don't shoot from bench anymore, really. I shoot from a tripod if I'm doing long range. Uh, I've got this configured to go out to 500 yards. Can an AR-15 go past 500 yards? Absolutely. But I begin questioning if you're using the right tool for the job then. So with this guy, I got a Gamma Epsilon muzzle brake up top, uh, Daniel Defense uh, full length quad rail, lower stock Daniel Defense bolt carrier group, Got a CMC 4.5 pound tr uh, flat trigger here. Uh, got a BCM gunfighter charging handle. Up top, we've got a Trigicon AccuPower 2.5 to 10 magnification. And that's about it, I think. I think that's all I've done to it. But yeah, I, I use this, I've shot hogs with this and I slap steel up to 500 yards. But if I start pushing past 500 yards, I switch out to 6.5 Creedmoor. It can be done with the 5.56, don't get me wrong. But again, I'm questioning if you're using the right tool for the job. You're gonna have guys in the comments bragging about being able to hit steel at a thousand yards using iron sights on a standard M4 or AR-15. Uh, that, that's great, that, that's, you, you can do that, you can do that for sure. But bragging about that to me is kind of like saying you built a complete AR using a hammer, a wrench, and a screwdriver. I don't think it's the right tool to be using. All right. So I have a lightweight build. This is pretty standard. It's a burnt bronze grid defense, kind of a budget uh, budget brand lower, uh, or upper and lower combo. Uh, I just got it because I like the color. Uh, we've got a Streamlight ProTac 350 lumen up front. I've got a BCM gunfighter angle vertical grip, Venom defense muzzle brake, BCM quick detach mount, Sig Romeo 5 red dot, Magpul bad lever, Toolcraft Nickel Boron Bolt Carrier Group, Radiant Raptor Charging Handle, and a Magpul, I think this is the new SL stock. Uh, and I also have a LaRue MBT as well in here. But yeah, I, I, this is a very lightweight gun, and I this is probably my second most commonly used rifle. One more that I just put together. This is an, the new IWI uh, Zion 15. Big fan of IWI. And once I got it in, I uh, got this zeroed out. I have a review coming out here in the next week on this specifically, but it's pretty much a stock rifle for now, uh, but I will be making a few changes. Stock muzzle, A2 flash hider, Streamlight ProTac, 1000 lumen light with a pressure pad, BCM angle uh, vertical grip, got a BCM QD mount, I have, this is a stock trigger, I will be putting a LaRue MBT in here. Um, stock mil spec charging handle, IWI bolt carrier group. And this is a B5 system stock and a B5 systems uh, grip. So you get a little bit more vertical angle versus a little bit more angle like you'll see on some of the other rifles I have. Optics, I've got a Trigicon Ascent on here. This is a one to four X variable power Optic, I'm not a huge fan of LPVOs, just largely because of the weight and 
because I don't need the actual ac actual magnification that much, but I wanted to have one just in case. Uh, I decided to find a use case for it. And then on the other side, of a, I have a canted red dot, 45 degree angle. The red dot itself is from Holosun. Um, the uh, mount is from Vortex. And uh, things I'm gonna change on this, I'm gonna put a bag, uh, Magpul bad lever on here, probably put a Radiant Raptor charging handle, and probably gonna get rid of this B5 system stock I've cut my fingers on this a few times charging it because this flares out. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this flares out and the corners here are really sharp. So charging this, uh, I've cut my fingers a couple times because I'm delicate. So I'll probably put a BCM on here. And yeah, that, that's about it. Uh, just, that's pretty much how I put together my ARs. Uh, different use cases, uh, close range, um, out to 200 yards, intermediate range, out to 500 yards. And I don't really do too much long range stuff with an AR-15. But yeah, hope you find this useful. See ya.